What are it says the castaways on the raft are surprised by something at sea, something unexpected. I mean, the thing fell off. The rudder? Is that yeah. it? I wouldn't have phrased it that way. No, because the four toed statue is in the next episode. Yeah. I can't wait to find out what that means. Nothing! I hope you're hungry <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is So I'm Watching Lost, Season 1, Episode 24. Exodus Part 2. Um, uh, Fine. Uh, it is kind of drawn out. It but is the there middle is, part of yeah, this finale trilogy. There's yeah. more things happening. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just thought of the Michael on the phone with his mom trying to pawn Walt off on a, a third stranger. <sighs> And then just very slowly in the foreground, Locke is wheeled in front of him across the screen. I was thinking maybe you could take him. Look, Ma, if it's a question of money, I... Don't. Then what am I supposed to do with him? He's not supposed to be mine. That took you out. I feel... So stupid. Nothing. <laughs> I feel nothing about that. I don't feel strongly either way. It was just... It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> well, because these episodes are showing them at the airport. Yeah, and it's before, supposed to be showing and, all these different ways mm -hmm. that their lives are connected. Yeah. And... That's not a connection. That's more something you have in common. <laughs> that's, a, that's a deep cut. That's a deep, deep cut. Deep cut inside joke. I like... I don't know. It's just... It's not good. No, it's not good. But it's like, th th there's not enough for it to be bad. And you're like, that's, like <laughs> okay, you're, it's I mean, nothing. Okay. <laughs> but it, the, but the th I just feel like whoever like storyboarded this episode uh, was like, was uh, like ha, 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 <laughs> my time to shine. <laughs> and I just, it's so, it's so inconsequential because at least some of the other ones, like Shannon impacted Saeed's life, you, like, you know, and this is nothing. I hope you're hungry. For nothing. It's so stupid. Okay. We also, sorry, we also in the previous episode, we forgot, I said that the air marshal was a dick again, but like the the TSA or whatever was like, why do you need five guns? And he was like, Kate, do you want to answer? And then it, there was this whole rigmarole and about and like teasing her and like just being a total dick about the stupid baby like toy plane. And then she like lunges at him and he manages to like elbow her and he was like, that's why I need five guns. And I'm like, you can't fire them all at once. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Do you need five guns because you're a terrible shot and you're just going to need to keep picking them up? Whatever. <laughs> Moving forward, back to uh, the Black Rock. Ours is being a total prick still. Mm -hmm. He, like, is fat shaming Hurley. And some of us have actually lost weight while we were here. Now, do you mind telling me where you're hiding the carbs? And I was like, dude! It got the... I, I remember now that the show made a couple of meta commentary yeah. jokes. And this is, this is like, right before meta kind of yeah. became a thing. But I do find it funny. And it is a trope that I actually enjoy when you're watching a show. Mm -hmm. And you have this moment where you're like... Because obviously, you're, you're, you're caught up in the drama of it all. And Arts is like... He says something about their clique and like just because you and the cool kids, blah blah. blah yeah. And Hurley was like, "What?" Hurley's like li literally just like, "I'm minding my business, dude." But again, I love the notion that they're all like that. All of this drama that we're watching from the show, yeah. is sort of self-imposed. Yeah, that that there's this clique of people, and the rest of the people hate that. Like Euphoria, I was like, the yeah. rest of the school has to hate these well, kids. Well, and, and like, com community <laughs> always did it really well. But I do kind of he, he just, your friendship is weird. Yeah, he just also is very. He seems very bitter about everything. He's like, and that's because we just sort of smash cut back out to him, and he's like, well, and all just of the like ones dumping on Hurley, and he's like, and then my third wife was like, blah, and I was like, dude, you're the problem. All of the ones. Of all the cool kids that need a dressing down, it's not Hurley. Like, Hurley's not the it, one that needs to be. <laughs> exactly. 100%. He's like, oh, Kate just magically gets all the best wreckage for her shelter. And I'm I mean. like, Kate is doing heavy lifting. 
No chance. It's like, I, I'm the first one to criticize Kate. I'm just episodes, saying the three of them would drive me nuts if I was Steve or, or Scott. Scott. Steve is dead. <laughs> or Scott is dead. What, Scott or Steve is dead. I have no idea. It's like the two girls from uh, Pitch Perfect who they don't even know which one of them is which. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I do. He just is like dumping all over them. And so they find the explosives inside the ship. And then they're like carrying them back out. They're ve- being like, they're not. <laughs> waving it all around or anything. And Although, he's he is so aggressive. But, but no, it's because he has information that he's that he gets to lord over them. Yeah, it's gross. It's super mm-hmm. gross. And like the the looks that Jack keeps giving him are hysterical. He's like, Who are you? Who do you think you are? It's super funny. It it it, it is. And he blows up. All right, we're not gonna take any more of this stuff than we need because nitroglycerin is extremely temperamental. So we just- <laughs> Dude. Yeah, he deserves it. Roller skate to the face. Okay. <laughs> it was obnoxious. It wasn't. That's like despicable. <laughs> Roller skate to the face. Uh, it, it is funny. A, a, a bit of, I think, needed catharsis, humor sure. and catharsis. Yeah. And it sort of puts, it, it, it really grounds the stakes. And I do think, Having after he blows up, the rest of them yeah. are sort of shell shocked in a very funny way. I love the little moment with Hurley and Kate where she comes to sit down with him because Jack and- Arts calls her princess, and I was like, no precedent, none, no precedent for that. Like even Sawyer only ever called her Freckles. Mm-hmm. Like please, but I do like I do like that moment with Hurley and Kate because he's very he. She comes to sit down by him because Jack and Locke are. Uh, like figuring out what to do or to, it's basically the dynamite because it's so old it sweats nitroglycerin which makes it extremely volatile Uh-oh. as opposed to like fresh dynamite <laughs> and so that's why he exploded so they have to be very careful and like he he manages to convey enough information that they have enough going that they can like take it over um, but I do love that Hurley is just like okay that was messed up yeah he just uh, exploded in front of us and it's just like a little moment of them just like sitting together being well like, it oh. happens a couple times there, there's a handful of moments in this this episode and the show itself where they take a moment to just sort of breathe and yeah. and not retrospect, but like reflect mm-hmm. on a micro trauma within the greater macro yeah. trauma. And mm-hmm. I find it I find it very interesting. And I kind of wish they did it a little bit more than they do. Well, there is like, and I think the most recent example we can talk about is is COVID, where it's like it actually humans are so adaptable that it's like that was the new normal so fast Mm -hmm. like it was just so fast that it happened and so it's like at this point they're used to the macro trauma they're used to being on the island and like not having but to have something that they can funnel some of that exactly examined yeah stress into a hundred percent because it's like like crying over spilt milk you know (laughs) It's it's a very immediate and like a very intense like momentary thing but it's like you're right the the larger trauma gets lost and so when they have these smaller ones ooh. (laughs) <laughs> they can be like, hey, this sucks. Here's why. And also, um, you said spilled milk. In Linda Holmes's first book, she has like a really funny thing where it's like the main character is having like a really, really bad time, but she's like not examining it properly or whatever. And then she drops an entire canister of rice and it goes literally everywhere in her kitchen. And so that's she when she like tweets and stuff, that's what she talks about. She's like, I dropped the rice today, you guys, because <laughs> that's what causes her to finally have the like cathartic breakdown. Or it's like Monica and friends yeah. with the um. The only dogs can hear you now. Yeah. Where, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And there even was one in the Yaya sisterhood where mm-hmm. like her excuse, the thing that she says is I dropped my basket. And it's just like, sometimes it's just, that's the thing. But, uh, that was nice. Yeah. Uh, there was another nice moment. It, it scratched, but scratched the surface. <laughs> that's another deep cut. Yeah. I like to say it because I think it's 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 dramatic. It has boy butt it, scratch. But it sounds like I'm saying butt, butt scratched. Scratch. <laughs> butt scratcher. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Uh, 
for the first time, I think th three of the women sit down and sort of acknowledge the insanity or the absurdity of the situation they're in. Yeah. And I just feel like that would have happened a little bit more and sooner. Well, I think it's again, to, to go back to your point, I think it's because there is this like intense thing happening where like they have to get to the caves because the others are coming and they're doing this and like the raft had to get out and like all of this, a lot of things are very immediate right now as opposed to just like kind of waiting around. So it's like, also Shannon has like kind of a lovely little breakdown in a scene. Well, so I mean, she's like hanging Saeed. on by, a th by well, yes, with Saeed. Yeah. But she's like hanging on by a thread. And so Sun comes to like tend to her a little yeah. bit. And then Claire ends up sitting down and they ultimately only end up saying like one or two half lines, lines yeah. and that needed to be more. Do you think all this, what we've been through, do you think we're being punished? Who do you think is punishing us? Fate. No one's punishing us. There's no such thing as fate. It kind of reminds me of uh, the there's a show that we loved, brilliant show that we loved, that it was only one season, The Society, mm. uh, TLDR. It's a group of teenagers get stranded in some facsimile of their hometown, and they're the only people there. And so the boys are like, fucking party hardy. Yeah. And that's not sustainable. And so basically all of the girls start meeting at dawn at the church. Yeah. Because the boys aren't going to go there or be awake. Mm -hmm. And they sort of come up with a plan. And that's just sort of in my experience. I feel like yeah. the women would be talking to, to each, each other. other more. This is one of those. Okay. <laughs> so this is one of those shows. I actually I saw like a, a thing this morning of <laughs> of a um, interview with Gaten Matarazzo and Joe Curie, where one of the, it was like a autocomplete and it was like to stranger things pass the Bechdel test. And they both, it was like, like just 404 error. They were like, it should, right? But they like couldn't do it. And it I, has to. I believe it does, but this is one of those. And if not in spirit, it's like um, exactly. glorious bastards. But I was going to say the same thing about this show where I'm like, there's so many different strong female characters, but like how many of them are ever having a conversation that's not about a man? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so funny where it's like, I would consider this to be a show that actually has a lot of good, interesting, different female characters but I, it might not pass the Bechdel test because even like this. Well, if it hadn't yet, this scene did by the skin of its teeth. Barely, because it starts off with Sun telling or talking to Shannon, Shannon about, about Boone. Boone. It's just funny. I just it, it's it's funny to recontextualize things. Like but then Claris is down, and they they are yeah. like I said, sort of waxing poetic. Yeah. And I just I would have I really wish we got more of that. Yeah, me too. Even if just a little bit. Um, but, uh, Rousseau comes back and steals Claire's baby. I mean, it makes sense. The, they, like, show their work. It's fine. Mm. It's not my favorite no. story. And we do get to that place with Claire where it's like, of course she's a young new mother in, like, a, a heightened circumstances. Heightened circumstance. Yeah. But we do get to a my baby place with her. That's just, the others ain't my baby. <laughs> and just, <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah. Uh. She also there's like a lot of at the very beginning of the episode. She's like trying to pack and leave. And Charlie, here's the thing too: is like Charlie is really trying to help her, and I I really like that, and I think it's realistic. But she is like. Don't touch my baby! And she's, <laughs> and she's like hysterical at two points in this episode, and only one of them do I think is warranted. And I just I don't know. And and also, I think the Shannon thing is good because she also has a good scene with Saeed where he like they kind of make a piece because she's struggling because she's trying to carry all of Boone's things. She has too much baggage. She, 
and she can't carry all of her, ba- her baggage and his baggage, it's not working. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, we're going to galaxy brain. <laughs> also, Saeed does have kind of, at the beginning, he's like, do you really need all this stuff? And I was like, it's her stuff, man. You were kind of like, that's all she has. That's all of her stuff. These are my things. But all I can think of, it's from Teen Wolf. Yeah. When Malia's the coyote, who's just trying to get her doll back. Yeah. And every time Price put in the recap with the coyote, like, it's mouth open and just says, don't touch my shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so, the, but they do have a nice moment and they come to, like I said, kind of a piece, which I, I think is really great. And then she has the nice moment with Sun and um, Claire. Claire. But yeah, I don't, I just Massive like. head wound Harry. <laughs> Claire. <laughs> <laughs> it also like what's funny what's the funniest thing to me is like after she after Russo brains her in the head presumably with the butt of her rifle she like it looks like someone put like a um what's like a manic panic like Zinka like, like a, I mean at least like they a, did in manic panic but it doesn't look like blood it's like no, it's, it's pink it's, yeah it's, it, I said it out there and I'll say it again because I was like man she stays getting just clocked because yeah. it happens I feel like several times at once upon a time like by seasonally <laughs> one time it's Merida <laughs> with a log and I remember we got Price Peterson and Lily Sparks yeah. on this one and Lily in her review was like stop she was like, writers, stop doing that in scripts. She was like, that's how you kill people. <laughs> like, it yeah. doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say the thing I always say when we talk about traumatic brain injury, which is that, like, choir boy Matt Murdock is just casually <laughs> <laughs> braining people across the city. And then he tr- tries to be all, like, the morally boy. superior to the Punisher. And I'm like, no, dude. Basically, Rousseau has taken the baby because she wants her baby back. We don't have a lot of context. For Not her. yet. Yeah. We know it's Alex. Yes. The baby's name is Alex. And Rousseau wants to make a trade with the others is the working plan. Yeah. And then so Saeed and Charlie are following, uh, going to the like column of black smoke. Because that's where Rousseau yeah. is going, apparently. Uh, and then Michael and Walt and Sawyer and Jen are on the raft. Mm-hmm. And Michael and Walt are continuing to have nice little moments, mm-hmm. sort of step by step repairing their yeah. relationship. And the rudder falls off. And they insist it's sinking. Rudder! Hey, we hit a log. We lost the rudder. Rudder! Rudder! We're losing it. It's sinking. Right. But at no point is it not just like buoying in the water. (laughs) (laughs) And Sawyer like dives in and like brings it back. And then Michael sees the gun. He was reading everybody's bottle messages. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, who who the I'm hell? not saying I wouldn't do it, yeah. but I'm gonna judge him for doing it. Uh, I mean, I think the I think the worst part of it is that they didn't all three decide to do it. Like the fact that Sawyer was just doing it. Or even it by like himself. he doesn't even have the decency to be ashamed or to be like like this kind of be like <laughs> I mean, I he's I think he's sort of assuming he's never going to see these people again. So mm-hmm. like what's the point? But I also do love that we get the other, another Hurley thing because he's like, who is Hugo and why is he leaving $160 million to his mother? And I do kind of like, oh, Hurley also thinks it's his fault that ours t- That up. was it. Yeah. That was, well, we kind of got it with the micro trauma, macro yeah. trauma conversation. But I remembered that him and Kate had a really, really nice conversation. Yeah. And considering she's the like cool girl, sort of like female receptacle to all of the man. Not a good enough reason to use nah, the word I said receptacle. what I said. I like it there. Like I an like, emotional reception? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that where all the men put their shit. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. You're right. I hate it. I, but you're right. <laughs> and so even though she plays that role so much, yeah. as you mentioned earlier, she is a developed character. Mm-hmm. And I like that beat with Hurley. Yeah. And I think Hurley desperately needed it. Mm-hmm. Just someone to actually be like, hey, how you doing? <sighs> um, Libby. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't even met her yet, no. and we're both like, fuck. Um, so is that oh well uh, what was the scene with Jen in the bathroom with the guy? 
he worked for her dad. Uh huh. But he was on a mission that he didn't know he was on. No, no, he knew he was on it. But they were they were going to deliver the watch and then disappear. They had decided that. Oh, they the were guy's gonna, like, I'm watching you. I, like I, we know that you're trying to leave. It's actually yeah. kind of one of my favorite tropes. Uh, like. In storytelling, in any kind of thing like that, tokenism is a thing. Mm -hmm. And I like the reverse of it, where I find the, like, one white person in the person of color world to Mm -hmm. be interesting. Yeah. Because do you remember that movie, The Mermaid? Yeah. There's the one white dude villain. Uh Uh-huh. But he's just, like, and it's full Japanese, (laughs) or Chinese, (laughs) Chinese, rather. And I just, I find it very interesting. It's it's an interesting reflection to look back on. It's funny. And I I think it's interesting that this dude, this, like, Joe Schmo, fucking Idaho, Ohio looking dude. His is like, credit is Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. Is deep in the like Japanese or the Korean mafia. Yeah. We also get a Charlie flashback where he has picked up Australia's surliest heroin laced <sighs> prostitute. Holding out on me? Holding out on you, no, I'm not holding Give out on you. Give it to me. Give me what? I'm not holding anything. Give it to me. I've got nothing in my hand. Give it to Get me. Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Let it go. Let it go. Are you crazy? <laughs> Let it go. Get off. Let it go. Ah! Get off. Ah! Get off. Get off. And they, 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 they have a literal bitch fight over this, the rest of this. It was rough. Era, era it was rough. I, uh, it, it, this episode actually succeeded in being the most I have felt for Charlie thus far. Mm. And I do largely feel for Charlie. Yeah. Uh, some of it, I think, especially his first episode, I think the cliches undercut mm-hmm. the... the Actual heart mm-hmm. of it. We get mo- more about And as much as stuff. I hate his second episode, yeah. I hate it in that it's an effective yeah. story. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't like what the bad things that happen. Yeah. <laughs> but I do, I do like this. And then also when he and Saeed are, they like take a rest and it's like at the plane crash site where Boone died. When there's like, yeah, a, like a bouquet of heroin at his feet. That's when you're just like, he just didn't stand a chance. Yeah. Like even trying his best and he can't catch a break. He's also like, he has been clean for like easily three weeks. So it's, he's like over the tough, the and really just, tough part. Just that shot. Yeah. Oh, it, it, since we don't know, like when well, you mentioned or... something where you're like, you mentioned in one in our the previous Charlie yeah. episode where you're like, I don't remember the moment where you fell in love with him. And yeah. for me, it's between that episode and this and now, episode. Well, he's just so like, despite her best efforts, he's just so devoted to Claire. Like she's constantly keeping him at an arm's length and. But not in a gross way. Not in a gross way, no. but he is like sincerely devoted to her. And I think he feels like, I think he kind of feels that he's like, well, I'm clean now. And like, this is maybe, even though the circumstances are terrible, maybe this is my shot at like making a like clean go of it, like in general. And so since, like I was going to say, since we're not sure when or if we're going to continue with this, he does end up taking the heroin and it does become a point of contention. I don't believe he ever ingests any more of I, it. I feel like he, I can't remember. But he has some. With it's a him. cross that he carries. Because he, at one point, I distinctly remember him saying, it's like just in case. Mm. But he never does it again, but he has it. I'm fairly certain there is an opportunity. Where they could have used it, I think and so he too. Does not fess up. And I think I got so really too. Yeah, mad. I agree. I think as well. Although, like, because it could have. Yeah, but Jack and Locke know that there's just heroin everywhere. They know. Locke Jack? knows for sure, and I think Jack oh, knows as well. Okay, well. And Saeed knows. Also, Jack, but buddy, I love you. I get your thing. I totally get it. My dude. And what reality uh, is is the only doctor yeah. and most competent leader yeah. also carrying the volatile hero <laughs> Here, or uh, the dynamite. dynamite. My only argument for him is that he's like everybody now is like, well, the raft is gone. So it's like a matter of time before we get rescued. But also like that is counting chickens well before they hatch. And so I I don't know, but he just like Kate's like no, this is why I came. I'm definitely carrying dynamite, and they even Let's look be at. Be honest, I mean she's beautiful. She's she's as she's expendable a- as she is beautiful. Yeah. and so that's <laughs> which and, is to say a lot. Uh, Mary, and, and that's the other thing too is like Hurley is like no, dude, I don't want to carry any dynamite. Are you out of your goddamn mind? So it's just like it, and and Locke is like 
nothing but good ideas in this episode. He's like, we should split it up. And he was like, and then also, we should, yeah, he's like, we should both have uh, like three just as like a fail safe, just in case. So like if one of us blows up, then the other one still has enough to like blow open the hatch and everything. And I just am sort of like, and then at the end where he's like, I think hope is in the hatch. I'm just like, (laughs) (laughs) like, no, thank you. Um, I, I do. I do think that's pretty much it for this episode. It ends. It, I mean, it, it abruptly on like ends. a hard cliffhanger. Yeah. So, and then we'll we'll watch the last one, and then we'll we'll be done with season Blow one. This popsicle stand. Yeah. Let's do it. You're really. You're like Dunzo. You're like so mad. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs>